Okay, so this is the finished result. The text tracked into the scene with a virtual camera recording the text, a shadow catcher catching the shadow and a virtual light casting that shadow onto the shadow catcher. Okay. I was clipping it slightly there. That's it there. Okay, so I'm going to go back to um, the point where I would have just finished analyzing the scene. So when you select your layer and go up to uh, your camera tracker, you just go track camera. That'll set off an analysis. You get a blue banner, and then when that's done its thing, you will see this. Okay. Now, so what we're looking at here is we're looking at the track points, and we're looking for a good ground plane on which to attach our text. The text gets attached to the target, which is the red circle there. So I'm going to look for something around here. I'm going to click to fix that, and then see if it moves nicely in perspective. You can add in additional points if you want. I'm actually going to leave it with just the three and I'm going to go right click create text camera and then I'm going to go right click create shadow catcher and light. So first thing I would do before I go off doing any more work is to just see how well that tracks in and it tracks in quite well. It's a little bit a little bit forward in the scene. Um, now this is actually something we can talk about in that if you attach your object here you do have the option of moving it back and it should still retain the, the trackable nature but the further you move from the point at which you attached your object the more drift and errors are going to come into your shot. So I'm going to leave it there but I would suggest that you attach it a little bit further back in the shot. Next step, I'm going to flip the text upwards so that it is standing and I'll use my rotation tool, go over the x-axis, hold down shift, pull that forward. So that is now upright, perpendicular to the ground plane and visually to the floor. The shadow is being cast from a default light position to the right hand side of the camera and the shadow catcher is very small so it's not fully catching all of the shadow. Now, the shadow catcher isn't a visible object and if you want to make sure that it's always going to capture catch the shadow there's no harm in spreading it off nice and wide next thing we do is we go into two views horizontal so we can see our camera and we can see our light and the first thing we need to do is to try and move this light to where we would assume the original light in the scene to be so I'll make sure I'm hovering over the z-axis and drag that back there and then pull it in along the x-axis so that it is behind the text. You can actually see the base of the light stand here so that's roughly where we're looking to go. And the last thing we can do then is raise the light up so that it is more in line with the original light between the text and the light. So you can see here that the shadows look pretty well um, laid out here and that they're kind of matching the shadows over there. So um, from here really it's just a case of manipulating the shadow by bringing down the darkness not too much because you want it to stay roughly the same as this and this and you can change the diffusion to make it a little bit softer a little bit more kind of blended into the background click OK last thing you can do then if you wish it's not essential is to load the text sorry to, to go into the material options of the text and where it says accept lights switch that off and then the light won't be plunging this side of the text into shadow because it is no longer in interacting with the light. Okay, so that is the, the tracked shot. And you can see another advantage of using this is that even when the text goes off the screen, it it's not following a feature. We didn't need to stick it to anything necessarily. So we can actually have things disappear off screen. It doesn't matter. Okay, so there we have it. That is a camera tracker shadow catcher and light all interacting together.